Hello friends, welcome to Embrace the Question. My name is Steve and thank you for joining me tonight or today or whatever time it might be where you are. It is tonight here and I'm starting to settle down. Hopefully you can't hear the locusts outside the window because they are being extremely noisy. We are going to review episode 8 of The Chosen entitled I Am He. I like this intro. I want to talk about this intro. So let's watch this intro. <sighs> 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 This is the spot, my sons. Shalom, my friend. I, I don't know that word. It's something my family says. It's a greeting of peace. You won't find much of that here, I'm afraid. I'm Jacob. I'm Yassib. Yassib, I would offer you something to drink, but... As you can see, we have just begun work on our well. You we bought this land from the sons of him. For only 100 quesida, can you believe it? <laughs> I believe it every time the princes of this land cheat another foreigner. You will cost the day you pay that 100 quesita. And what do you think would have been a fair price? Zero quesita, zero goats, zero... I have 12 sons to work the land and once we strike water... You will never strike water. Yes, the recent rain makes the land look lush, but... The underground river runs around the mountain, not up it. Our god takes care of us. This is Canaan. The gods are not nice here. <laughs> we won't be here that long. We are sojourners. Ah, and what are you looking for? A land our god promised my grandfather, Abraham. Your grandfather? You ever notice how the gods are always promising us things, but we never really see them happen? Sometimes it takes generations. Ah, <laughs> suit yourself. So, what is this uh, god of yours called, anyway? El Shaddai. I've never heard of him. Not many people have, but I think someday they will. You have no home? Where's your temple for this god? He has no temple. So where do you worship him? We build altars wherever we go. And you do not carry him with you? <laughs> no. There are no carved idols of him. So he's invisible? Yes. Well, usually. There was one time he broke my hip. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I've heard enough. Of all the gods you could possibly choose from, you pick an invisible god whose promises take generations to come true, who, who makes you sojourn in strange places, and he broke your hip. That is a strange choice. <laughs> oh, immigrants. We didn't choose him. All right, so that is the intro to episode eight. 
entitled I Am He. Now, do you guys like the intros that they do, the flashbacks? I'm mixed, usually, about the flashbacks, simply because it takes me back to unfamiliar characters, unfamiliar in the story. They're, they're not <laughs> the characters that you see playing uh, the, the normal characters of the story. So I... I, I'm not drawn to the characters as much, but the I think I would stick with that because I like the foundation that it gives. Now, obviously, what we see at the beginning here is the digging of Jacob's well, and we find them digging on top of a hill. Have any of you been to see Jacob's well? Jacob's well, the location of Jacob's well is, there is some contention about the actual authenticity of the place they call Jacob's well, but there is probably less contention about that than any other holy site in, in the Holy Land. If, have you been there? Has anyone that have, has viewed these, these videos, has anyone been there and visited that well? It, it is in Nablus, I believe. It is, as in the story of, of John 4, which is, by the way, the only place it's mentioned. It's in the land of Sychar. Sychar is one of those places where they're not really 100% sure where it was other than they really think they they know where Jacob's well is. And they have built a, su a succession of churches on top of it. And it's still underneath the ruins of, of a church that I believe the last one was built in the 18th century, so the 17-something. And it's kind of nestled in a cave. It's still rather deep. But I, like I said, I am a big fan of, of Genesis, and it's funny, as many times as I've read Genesis, how, it's funny how many details I don't get that I haven't memorized out of that book. One of them is I was sure that, that I knew where the story of Jacob's well was. There is no such story. There is the movement of, of Jacob to a place that he sets up camp. He, he, he settles there. And there is absolutely no mention of him building or, or, or digging a well. Now his, his uh, father, Isaac, dug many wells. And it was documented. And that's what confused me, is I was thinking, surely one of those was Jacob. Jacob's well is mentioned one time in Scripture, one time only, and that is in John 4. So we know that this episode is going to be about the woman at the well, because she is the central figure in John 4. Jacob's well is interesting. I don't know, but I don't know is, was it built on any sort of a hill? Do they think it was ever a hill? As, as the man said, water doesn't flow uphill. Pretty cool. That's true, it doesn't, but yet they struck water. Now, this well is interesting in that it both has a source from the ground, it is a groundwater aquifer, which makes it a well, but it also receives water from above. It's one of, which makes it a cistern. That's one of the few wells. We're not talking about raining into the hole that is the well. This well has a consistent source from above and below. How do you like that? That is cool stuff. It is a unique well. That's what I'm trying to get at. So. This is going to be interesting. I, I have seen this episode. I don't remember many details about this episode, so let's watch it. You know, 
When the door opened, I honestly hoped it was a thief or a murderer come to put me out of my misery. Sorry to disappoint you, but there's something I need from you first. <coughs> come closer, I can't see you. Your hair is matted and your face is red. Why? You know why. If you came back to live with me, you could go to the well with the other women in the cool of the morning. You're wrong about that. I could go with them if I had stayed with Ramin. Out with it. How much do you need? I'm not here for money. I've brought a bill of divorce. All you need to do is sign it. Only a man can divorce his wife, not the other way around, Fotina. Which is why the certificate is in your name, Narayan. On what grounds am I to divorce you? I'm living with another man. So what? That's all you did with me, living. You know why I married you. Stability. The shine wore off quick, didn't the it? The Pentateuch makes provision for a husband to divorce his wife if she lies with another man. Listen to you talking about Pentateuch. Why do I have to do? Bring him here? Yes. I want to see the latest shade of drooling tomcat you put your spell on. Harry. Before he gets bored. Like the others. Will you sign it or not? Give it here. No. Please. Please? You're my property, Fatina, and I don't part lightly with my possessions. story set up. The family, the husband, the estranged husband of the woman at the well. Fortina is how... Actually, they, there is a name in literature that comes down through tradition that probably is that name. I, I am unfamiliar with that name, but Fortina, I believe, is what they are calling her here. Not a happy household. Of course, this is conjecture how it really was. We know that she lived with, she had had multiple husbands and was living with somebody that was not her husband. And that is the case here in this contrived account, but certainly could be accurate. Good women did not go to the well alone. In this particular story, the reason why she was not going to the well is because she was living with a man who was not her husband. And it appeared that the other women had ostracized her. Maybe that would happen. But the, the other side of that coin is that women who went to the well alone were asking to meet men because that's that was a place where if you didn't want to meet men, you went with a group. It wasn't safe to go alone, for one, but it was also a way of advertising, if you will, looking if you were available. And this woman had been available quite often in the past. So another unsavory character out of Bible literature, right? <laughs> <laughs> the way he ran from the red quarter, nearly tripping on his robes. <laughs> a fairy say running? <laughs> Somehow I can't see that. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I thought for certain he would trip and fall and I would be arrested. No, with your luck, Rivka, probably would happen, huh? Oh. <laughs> I thought for certain Lil was gone forever that day. And it's Mary now. Always was. Does anyone want any grapes? Barnaby, you eat a lot. Very absurd. Thank you. Simon? No. You know, Matthew, when you're not behind iron bars, you're quite handsome. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Hmm. May I help you? We were just on a walk and we heard voices, and I thought it sounded like. But surely not. And yet it is you. Would you like to come in? We would never. Never be caught dead in a... In a what? In a tax collector's house? Not only that, but we say... Do you know what she... And he... They are... You seem to be having troubles finding your words, man. Why does your master eat with tax collectors and sinners? It is not the healthy who need a doctor. But the sick. I must say... I am shocked. She is from the Red Quarter. Much of what is done there cannot even be spoken by my tongue or across my lips. It is so unholy. The mere mention of it would defile me. Sounds like a personal problem. But him and the others he works with, they betray our people for money and they are not even sorry. If you're so offended, then leave. Let them speak, Andrew. They've never offered guilt sacrifices in the temple. What? The priest keeps records. We check them. Tax collectors are not welcome at the temple. Would like them better if they made the proper sacrifices. This is not about me. This is about what God wants. You are forgetting the scroll of Hosea. Hmm? Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy more than sacrifice. There are righteous men on the lookout for you. And they are weighing every word you say. Is that a threat? Please let them know this, Yusuf. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Is everything under control here? Uh, yes. We were just going on our way, Centurion. As Premier Ordiner to you. Premier Ordiner. You all keep eating. I, I will talk to this man. Guys. So I had to turn it up a little bit because I was not catching every word. I hope the volume stays consistent for all of you. This showdown between Jesus and Yosef, who I am not sure introduced himself to Jesus, which would have freaked him out a bit. But I love it. It's, it was a really nicely done setup, which is they were always trying to trap him, right? And we know that they approached him and they said, why does your master eat with tax collectors and sinners? Which was exactly what they had all around that table. Matthew's hosting a party. There, I don't think that there is a record of of Levi hosting a party. We know that Zacchaeus hosted a party. I'm gonna I'm wondering if they're going to incorporate the character of Zacchaeus at some point. That would be fascinating. And it would be similar, I'm sure. I wonder if you remember the scroll of Isaiah. I desire mercy over sacrifice. These guys that play the Pharisees, they are infuriating little guys, aren't they? Well done. I mean what what a masterful job of acting like a real first century rear end. <laughs> they are so good at it. And then here comes Gaius, who introduces himself. Uh, I didn't catch the whole title, but Primi. Not Primi, but there is like a one there in, in the Greek I learned that from a friend of mine that told me there is like a one character difference between Primi being 
a centurion, which is what Gaius is, and like a slander, like a dog. It would have been very close, and honestly, I wouldn't have been surprised had, had Quintus called him either one, but that's just FYI. He is a centurion. Nifty. Although Simon is really not happy to be there, he is still very defensive over everything aimed at Jesus. I like that. And it fits his character in the Bible. He's, he's a hothead. So yes, I'm enjoying this character play, played by Shahar, uh, and I've learned that Paris Patel is Matthew. He's doing an excellent job also, but kudos. Once again, kudos to these guys. I like what they're doing. Let's keep going. You're making a mistake. You can walk away from this. I made my choice. Look at that room. Other than Rom and Jay has, whom I know to be law-abiding tax collectors, everyone else in there, the dregs of Capernaum. Gaius, lower your voice. The bottom of the barrel. Germanic, correct? Isn't that what you told Quintus? Do not change the subject. Your people surrendered. I'm surrendering too. Your promotion was well earned. You will do well without me. Better even. Hmm. How? You're the one who got me promoted. That is untrue. Do not play dumb. You know how this all happened. You could say thank you. No, I'm not going to do that. Well, if you can't say it, then there's something you could do to show it. I'll pay you if necessary. I do not want your money. What is the favor? You know, I've never thought about that. I know that Zacchaeus promised to return all that he had cheated everyone out of multifold, like fourfold. But I never thought of, of Levi, Matthew, actually having a nice bankroll the entire time that he is in the ministry. That's, uh, I wonder how much he financed the, the ministry of Jesus. Because I know that he had other Czech writers in his group. He had, he had members of Herod's family in his group. He had members, well, Herod's steward was wealthy. Herod had made a fortune on, on spice, a particular spice. And it was a spice that was the equivalent of, the name is escaping me, forgive me, but it, it was the equivalent of Viagra here. It was said that just a drop of this stuff would just drive members of the opposite sex crazy. And Herod was selling it, had made fortunes on it, and his steward was reaping the benefit of being his steward, who was undoubtedly wealthy, just like Herod. Well, the, the, the wife of the steward, Joanna, I believe it was, not Susanna. It, it's one of the two. And I, I didn't look, the, look this up recently, but I think it was Joanna. She was one of Jesus' followers. That means, what do you need? All the money that he could have needed that, to get from point A to point B. Pretty interesting stuff. Never thought of this with, uh, with Levi before. And can you picture Moshe and Gideon? Their little chins resting on the table. When you say the Yeshechayil, that's the way Shabbat was meant to be. Family, knit together around the table. My mother's gilded plates, your grandmother's candlesticks. May she rest in peace. I don't miss her. And if she could see you now, receiving the highest honor ever bestowed by our order, she would burst with pride. I remember the inscription she had over the doorway of her room. Adonai El Roy, the Lord, the, the God, God who, who sees, sees me, 
the words of Hagar. She always loved that Hagar was caught up in something complicated and fraught, but not of her choice. And yet, God saw her. And he knew that the path she was forced to take would not be an easy one. When we stumble onto hard roads, he finds us and comforts us. Or does he call us to him? Persian myrrh and camphor to commemorate our last day in Capernaum. One last day. Nicodemus, I love our life. As do I. Take me back to it. I <clears throat> change my mind. I, I will <clears throat> prepare my remarks. I will need a moment. Nicodemus, I love my life. Mm, that that's what did Jesus say? Let the one who loves the one who loves his life shall lose it. The one who hates or forsakes his life for my sake shall save it. He's very distraught. He's not any any longer enamored with with the honors of his order, is he? I wonder as pastor, as a pastor, if we get enamored with our order if we start to love our life more than we love the presence. Hmm. I see you are alone. I assume that means you've found a replacement to watch our little friend. Uh, a new soldier has been trained and installed. Good. And I am reviewing applications for a new public honest for that district. What district? The collection district previously assessed by Matthew. Why are you doing that? Matthew left. He quit, Dominus. What do you mean, he quit? Why would you let him quit? He is a contractor. I, I had no recourse. Quit to do what? He used to become a student. Of what? Don't make me keep asking questions, Prince. He used to study the Jewish God. He left to follow a holy man, the man from the Eastern Ghetto. That, that is all I know. Oh, I really don't like that man. I really do like that scene, though. I wonder if it really happened. I mean, I wonder if anything like that, if, if Matthew was really as good as... This is Paris that plays Matthew is set up to be good. I just wonder how hard it was to replace publicans. Would that be a Republican, by the way? No, I just wonder if it was difficult to find people to, to step into a lucrative job that everybody would hate him. And did it have to be a Hebrew? Why, why couldn't it be a, a Roman or any nationality at all? Things that make you go, hmm. Brothers, extra hey. food from Aima. And she made more. She's convinced we'll starve along the way with six days of walking, huh? Three. Three. <laughs> We're going to run all the way to Jerusalem. <laughs> that won't work for Simon. He's a terrible runner. Yeah, well, I have bad chins. Or maybe if you didn't get in a fight with Abe and Joseph for every week. Easy, easy, boys. Well, my fighting days are over. Simon, you seem quiet this morning. Well, we have a long journey ahead. Yeah? Apparently only half as long as we thought. I'll explain later. Simon, what troubles you? Nothing, just excited for the trip, you know. You can tell me the truth. 
You're telling me you don't already know what's in my head? That's a conversation for another time. For now. I'm the only one among us who is married. So you think I should have only called single people? Of course not. And I'm glad you didn't, but... Eden will be along with her Ema. You're scared that things could get worse and you wouldn't be there. See? That's what I mean. You already know anyway. Simon, everyone here knows what you're thinking most of the time. It does not take God's wisdom. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I just got to say, that's that's awesome. I wonder if Jesus was that way. So we know that 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 Simon still has a sick mother-in-law at home, and that's part of what he's worried about. I really thought that he was upset about the whole dinner at Matthew's thing. So I had forgotten the details of his complaint. The ceremony was glorious, teacher. Your acts of faithfulness and discernment have been duly recorded for all history. Thank you, Shmira. I'm grateful for your service as well. Thank you. I foresee you will be an important leader in our order for many years to come. Maybe not just here in Capernaum, Rabbi. Perhaps I will one day teach across Judea. Maybe even in Jerusalem. Perhaps you will, Shmira. It's not such a ridiculous notion, is it, Rabbi? I have studied under your venerated tutelage, after all. As your reputation grows, so too do my own prospects. I think it is perhaps bold to assume outcomes. Our work is for God. He chooses where it takes us. You're right as always, Rabbi. But under your guidance, I've found a matter of law I'm deeply passionate about. One that resonates with many others, even as far away as Jerusalem. I'm delighted to hear your fervor, Shmuel. Tell me, what is it you've become so passionate about? False prophecy. When I heard the man from Nazareth tell the paralytic his sins were forgiven, I thought only God can forgive sins. At that very moment, he turned to me and recited my thoughts as if reading them from a scroll. I felt the same. Did he use divination, I wondered. But it's obvious. Of course I would think this thought. He called himself the Son of Man, as if from the prophet Daniel, here, in the town of my order. He came from Nazareth, <laughs> not heaven. To him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. He's simply a man. I don't understand it anymore. His though. dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. The man claimed to be God, and you said nothing. I will petition Jerusalem, requesting permission to search the archives for all matters pertaining to such false prophecy. Will you oppose my petition, Rabbi? The question on the mind of every man who reads my account will have to be, what did Nicodemus do? So, it's all about politics and promotion for you, isn't it? It's not to serve God. On the contrary, teacher, it's about the law. And the law is God. If I'm rewarded for that, it's because I learned from the very wisest. I will not. Oppose your petition. And, Shmira, you have learned nothing from me. That's a brutal scene. That, that's one that we, it was a showdown we kind of thought was coming. Nicodemus and Shmuel, I, I think that's kind of the pronunciation of Samuel, but Shmuel, one totally steeped in the law, devoted to the law, the law is God, and the other one now, who, who's been there, knows where he's at, where, where his disciple's at, but he's he's been shifted on the inside. 
that being Nicodemus. I, that last statement, Shmuel, you've learned nothing from me. Not a nice statement. But Shmuel wasn't wrong as far as Jesus claimed to be God. That's one of the big questions out there. And you can Google it and you can just start typing, did Jesus claim to be God is probably the top thing that will autofill in the blank there. Did Jesus claim to be God? Did he outright claim to be God? And the answer is, yeah, he did. That was one of those times when he did. He did it in a very Jewish way. He, when he calls himself the son of man or the son of David, or there's, there's a lot of places in scripture where he was making a statement that was undeniable. Before Abram, before Abraham was, I am. That is about as blatant a statement of I am God as you can make. So, yeah, that was a... Shmuel wasn't wrong. Jesus made those claims. And the law doesn't like those claims. Actually, the law agrees with those claims, but the followers of the law had made the law God, had made the law an idol, and it was a problem for them. <coughs> <sighs> Where is Simon? Can he build us a fire? He's away. <laughs> Fishing? No, something else. <coughs> Lie still. I wasn't expecting you here. People usually aren't. Can I get you something warm to drink? I was just stoking the fire. You saw it first, you know. What do you mean? What I see in Simon. You were the first person to notice when no one else did. That connects us. My mother said I was drawn to his wildness and that I would regret it. I wonder what she will say now. We're uh, going into town to sell these nets. We'll be right back. Stay here a moment, Simon. I just want to leave some extra money behind for Eden and Emma while I'm away. Put your nets down and go sit with your mother-in-law. <laughs> Simon to make sacrifices and leave things behind in order to follow me. You are one flesh with Simon. He cannot make sacrifices that are not also yours. You have a role to play in all of this. Do I? You will know in time. <laughs> I can't make everything about this easier for you wouldn't be our people's way. <laughs> no, it has not been. Nor will it continue to be. But I see you. You understand? I know it is not easy to be at home when your husband is out doing all of this even when you are excited about it and proud of him. So, I wouldn't ask you to do this without taking care of a few things. You mean? Plus, normal Simon is difficult enough. You think I want to travel with a worried Simon?
pay respect. Her forehead burns my hand to the touch. We should get a doctor. There is no need. Jesus of Nazareth. You've never met him before. Welcome to my son-in-law's home. Thank you. What am I doing lying here? You had a terrible fever. And all of you staring down. Dasha, don't. No one move. I'll be right back with some drinks. <laughs> and here, here, please hold this fire. Coming. <laughs> Yes, I love goat cheese. I should, yeah, see about the uh, goat cheese. <laughs> starts it's about to get real right that is one of those scenes that everybody has to have the tissue box on but I love that scene I, I love it for a couple of reasons one Eden is one of the more likable characters in in the the whole episode in 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 the whole series she's she's a lovely person you can just tell it you know that those problems existed in Simon's house. She had a sick mother. Simon had to be worried about it. Jesus did something about it. But that dialogue between Eden and, and Jesus was very, very special. I know that for every God-man and God-woman out there, people that are devoted to the ministry, in any form their spouse has to deal with that sacrifice many of you are in that position you've you're in that position or your spouse is in that position and you understand what that kind of sacrifice could entail simon was about to be sucked in to a maelstrom of ministry from which he could never get out. He, he, he said yes. And so that reward goes to him, but it also goes to his spouse. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think all spouses should be more aware of that reward. But uh, love, love that scene. This is a long episode. This is a one hour episode with me yakking it's an, another hour so we're going to cut this one in half as well and i'm going to prepare the second half of the episode and release it separately okay i just don't like to release one and a half hour videos or or more so we're going to keep this one try to keep this one under an hour and uh hey, i hope you enjoyed watching this episode with me or this half episode with me still have half to go if you did give me a, a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more like this including the second half then make sure you're subscribed and if you know people that like the chosen share these videos that would really help okay but love you all thank you for the the kind comments they really do mean a lot 
They really do, okay? Blessings, guys, and I will see you on the next one.